In this lab vlog, I'll be discussing the my, my current setup for writing code. Uh, so basically, my setup and my workflow essentially is consist or rather consists of three tools: Vim as the text editor, Tmux, and Tmuxinator. So the way I, I uh, the way I work on projects is that I, I I only reside in the terminal to write code. I don't use any graphical user interface IDEs. Uh, and I just want to be as lightweight as possible, yet as powerful as possible. So I'll start off with Vim. So my setup for Vim is essentially having a, um, a sidebar here, or a, a, a file browser here, or directory structure, directory, directory tree structure at the left-hand side. And I do this by using the Nerd Tree plugin. So if I take a look at my Vim RC file, I have here nerd trees, nerd tree, right? From uh, screw loose, and the way I install these plugs in plugins is that I use the bundle tool. So you can check out bundle tool and see how to install it. But it's basically cloning the Vim plugin inside the directory Vim slash bundle. And also in the GitHub page of bundle, you'll see how to uh, set up your Vim RC for it to actually use bundle. Okay. Once you have that installed, you can use several plugins, and as mentioned, one of those is Nerdry from Screw Loose. Okay. And uh, the way it's set up right here is that I use leader n to toggle the Nerdry command. Okay. I also set my map leader to question mark because it's actually much closer to uh, n, right? And it's it's much more fluid for me in terms of uh, toggling the sidebar. So if I type in question mark n, it will produce the nerd tree uh, structure to the left and toggle and a comma n again closes the nerd tree structure. I also have uh, a bunch of plugins for syntax highlighting. Since I write mostly Ruby on Rails code, I have Vim Rails uh, from Tpo and Vim Ruby from the Vim Ruby plugin. I also have a bunch of JavaScript syntax highlighting uh, for mustache as well. Um, what else? Yeah, and I guess that's basically it. By default, Vim actually recognizes C++ quite well. So I didn't need a, any special plugin for that. Okay. Aside from... Um, aside from the plugins, I also have the control P set up right here right to search for certain files so let's say i'm working on a rails project um, let's see the bank account application if i press ctrl p it will allow me to search for certain files let's see the gem file right so and it will pull up that file uh, once selected okay so basically that's i guess that's it for vim oh sorry uh Right, so it's just a bunch of syntax syntax highlighting plugins, as well as some nerdry for uh, the file structure and control P for searching for a file. I also set my tab size to two and use spaces for tabs. And I have a bunch of custom ignore um, directories and files so that control P doesn't search for them. Among which is the git directories, uh, executables, SVN directory, images, public system, mostly about Rails files, right? That I don't really need to search, such as images, um, the log file, node modules, if I'm inserting some JavaScript into my project, uh, as well as some CPP object files that get um, compiled or that get produced every time I compile a, a project. So I guess that's basically it for Vim. The others are pretty standard. I also have a gist file in my GitHub account to show um, this or to, to save this particular configuration. So next time, let's say I buy a new set, a laptop, or this laptop gets um, gets out of service, then uh, I can install my plugins by just copying that Vim RC file and running plugin install. So that's basically it. I just need a file structure, a file browser directory, and a, and a bunch of syntax highlighting and control P to search for a file. Now, this one isn't really that useful. This text editor isn't really that useful unless I can run 
uh, a server together with the text editor, especially for Ruby on Rails projects. Right? I run a development server at the same time I edit code. So for me to do that, instead of opening up two terminals, I use tmux. Right? So uh, for example, I probably have the vim open in one tmux window and I create another tmux window and have the server for that uh, window open. Okay. I might have other windows as well for uh, other things like probably logs or running a register server or running webpack depending on the needs of the project. But for a default Rails application, for instance, all I need is one tmux window running the server and one tmux window running the text editor. Okay. The nice thing about tmux is that I also have it configured so I can do things like uh, split screen. So for example, if I want to do a quick Rails DB migrate or rake DB migrate, I can split the screen, run rake DB migrate, exit the window, and continue whatever I was doing. Okay, so it makes the workflow much easier to, um, to, uh, to handle. Okay, so I have Tima, Puma server running there and Vim running on another uh, window. So Tmux is very useful for my workflow, especially since I am doing everything from the terminal, making it very lightweight and very powerful at the same time. All right, and finally, the last tool that I use is Tmuxinator, which is actually a Ruby gem that allows you to configure uh, multiple Tmux windows for a given project. And we do this by using a YAML file found in I think it was the home directory slash dot demoxinator and it contains all the uh, project or the configuration files there. So let's take a look at that real quickly. Okay, so I have a bunch of projects right there, uh, which, which are basically YAML files. So demoxinator will read those YAML files and open up the necessary tmux windows. So for example, if I wanted to create a Tmuxinator configuration for the bank project I'm doing on Ruby on Rails, I do Tmuxinator's new bank, for example, it will automatically create a bank.yml file under the .tmuxinator directory in your home directory. And the first thing that we configure here is um, the directory of the project. So in this case, my, the bank application resides in workspa workspace slash bank. You can also configure the default layout for a given window with these parameters right here. Uh, before I explain that, we also have a root keyword here called windows, which defines an array of windows, of Tmux windows that this particular pro project will open or that the Muxinator will open once you run the bank project. For each window, you can add a layout, for example, main vertical, and a bunch of pins for that uh, particular window. But most often than none, for a default Rails application, I just start with an editor window that opens up Vim, as well as a server Tmux window that opens up the default Rails server. So at the bare minimum for a Rails project, I usually have an editor Tmux window and a server Tmux window open. So I'll try that out right now. I'll save the file, quit, and initiate that project by doing Tmuxinator start bank. Okay. So it opens two Tmux windows, the Vim text editor for me to start writing code, and the server so for the development server to run. So if I wanted to run a ready server in line with this, then I just um, create a new tmux window inside the tmuxinator slash bank.yaml file and run the redis command there. For C++ programs such as the, um, the artificial neural network project, uh, it's, all, it's similar to a Rails project. I usually have two Tmux windows, one for the Vim text editor, of course, and the other one for the compile process. So for example, for, um, for this one, I have the editor right there. Okay, so I can start editing files. And I have the compiler which runs um, a, a compile process, such as make or CMake or whatever compile process I have. Okay, so that's it for my works workflow uh, setup. 
So in summary, I just used three tools, Vim for my text editor with the necessary plugins, uh, Tmux and Tmuxinator for project initiation. Okay, making the setup very lightweight and very robust and powerful for my needs.